Hey guys, this is Nikki aka The Dragon Queen and today I want to talk about something that I just listened to on booktube. Um, I watched a video by a, a booktuber that I'm not familiar with. I watched two videos actually. Uh, one was about buying new books versus buying used books and how booktube is making us possibly shallow in our book buying experiences. and. The other was about diversity, and while the diversity w that was in question was actually about race, they actually also mentioned um, diversity in the types of books that we read or that are mentioned in BookTube itself. So one thing I did notice about the diversity aspect is that BookTube usually does young adult, and that's very, very common. Um, also, BookTube is very, the most popular BookTubers they usually read the latest books that just came out so they get new copies as soon as possible they spend lots of money and i realized something i realized that i'm slowly going down that route and that's not necessarily where i want to go with reading when i read books i love young adults sometimes don't get me wrong but the constant interaction the constant love triangles the constant insta love the constant childish behavior gets really tiring really quickly and I I'm I'm starting to get annoyed with young adult and while I still love young adult and some of my favorite series are young adult I want to branch out again back into where I originally started which was thrillers and horror and high fantasy and now indie books and those aren't necessarily all young adult and I want to read adult books again. Um, I know though that by doing that I am risking losing followers or having less views and honestly that's not the point of booktube. The point of booktube is to, like they were mentioned in both of them, to find people who in are interested in the same thing you are or similar things or even different things so you can discuss and grow and learn. Um, I don't want to follow the footsteps of every popular booktuber and just read young adult. Yes, some of the books that they have suggested are amazing. I would not have picked up Cinder if it wasn't for booktube. I wouldn't have picked up um, Night Circus if it wasn't for booktube and both of those are some like on my favorite bookshelf. So there are a lot of books that I haven't would have never read if it wasn't for the young adult booktubers, but there are some fantastic books that I've read that are indie books. There are fantastic thrillers that I've read um, that are adult. There are fantastic uh, sci-fi books that I've read that aren't young adult. And there's some fantastic non -middle, gr or middle grade books that I've read and non-fiction books that I've read. And I want to share those on my book too. And one of the biggest things that I said when I did my newbie tag and I slowly pulled away from this was that I wanted to bring indie books into booktube. All of these books up here are indie books. They're all some of them might be published, but most of them are indie books. They were self-published books, and of the ones that I've read, they are all fantastic. I have read ebooks from authors that are in that are indie authors, and they are the best damn books I have ever read, ever. And I will continue to support those authors as long as they live, and we don't like have a fighter, you know. As long as they, as long as they're amazing, which I'm sure that won't change, um, I will continue to support these authors, even if they decide to continue to self-publish. And that's the wonderful thing about today's society is you do not have to have a publisher to succeed. And while I am a publisher now, and I would love to get all these books published, I know that I am. I like to be necessary and I know that I can provide something as a publisher that self-publishing does not provide, but you can succeed on your own with self-publishing and that's fantastic. And I want to bring that back. I want to bring indie books back. I want to bring some nonfiction books into this, into this world. I want to bring thrillers into this world. I want to read those things again and not just focus on young adult like I've been focusing on. And I also want to 
Regarding the used versus new books, I want to stop buying new books. I know, shocker. My problem is I have fallen into the trope that my bookshelf will only be gorgeous if I only have new books. And here's the thing, some of my favorite books, which are here, these are used. These are my copies that I've had for years. And these books here, from here to all these books here, you can't see some of them, but these are all from my childhood. And when I have children, I will read these to my children. And when I have children or grandchildren, I will read these to my grandchildren. When I have my friends' kids over, I will read this to them. And these books will be a part of us. This will be our relationship. And I remember, I have sig signatures in here from my grandparents. And when I'm older, I will look back at this and, be, and remember those memories that we've had together. And I don't get that if I buy a brand new book and put it on my bookshelf. Sure, once I have kids, I could then share the book and read it with them, but if I constantly do that, where's the fun? So, one thing I want to try, um, I'm not gonna stop buying new books, but what I want to do is I want to minimize my purchases. First off, I have a lot of books. I know, shocker. Um, but I haven't, read all of the books that I own and that's a problem for me. I constantly buy new books and I don't need to. I should read the books that I own and if I'm going to buy books, why am I spending 10 to 15 dollars on a brand new book? Why? I need to start going to the used bookstore. There is one nearby. I need to start going to the thrift store. I need to start buying out of my comfort zone and buying things that I wouldn't necessarily think I would like to see if I would like them. I need to go back to the library again and check books out and just try it. See what I like. That's how I got Gone Girl. And Gone Girl was freaking amazing. I would have never read that if I would have gone to the library. I would have never read The Last Man if I wouldn't have gone to the library. It's a graphic novel. I would have never read, um, what was the other one that I read? <laughs> uh, Fable. I would have never finished Fable because I don't want to buy every graphic novel that I read. Those take, those are expensive. Graphic novels are expensive and I love Fables. I loved that series, but I would have never bought them because they're expensive. And I need to get into that mindset for new books because I don't need to constantly buy books. I need to read the 300 some odd freaking books that I have before I go buy more. I mean, there's going to be exceptions to the rules. For example, if a new Dresden Files book comes out, I'm going to go buy pick that sucker up as soon as possible because I need my fix. I need my Dresden Files fix. If a book that I already have a series for or that I've been anticipating and I really want to read it because I want to read it, not because BookTube is saying I want to read it, then I want to go pick that up. But otherwise, I need to go to the used bookstore and I need to pick out some books that I might like or I will love. And you know what? They're going to be four or five times cheaper than what I spent at Books A Million or Barnes & Noble. And I love Books A Million, I love Barnes & Noble, I love going book shopping and coming home with a huge stack of books, but I need to get over the beautiful covers and start picking up some a little beat up and well-loved covers. And that's, that's the wonderful thing. This book here, see, this book isn't perfect. It's beat up, it's aging, it's yellow, yellow pages. But you know what? This book was printed in 1971. I honestly actually think this was my mom's and this is mine now. And that's amazing. I still have this and it's in really good condition for a book that's over 40 years old. And yes, the spine is bent and a little torn, but you know what? That's okay. I have 
I have this Bible. I'm not religious, but I have this gorgeous, precious moments Bible. And it was from my grandparents. And I got it. You can't, don't know if you can see that. But I got it October 13th, 1991. I got this shortly after my brother was born, my little brother. And I still have it. I don't necessarily believe what it says, but I will never get rid of that book because it has a special meaning to me. And I need more books like that. I want more books that have a meaning that show that they've been loved and they've been read over and over and over again and that they're a joyful experience to, to absorb and not brand new books. Um, I can't, I don't wanna pull things off my shelf, but I don't need to have a brand new book that's perfect and that has no cracks in the spine and nothing against the book I just picked up. I just grabbed a random book. I'm really excited to read that one, actually. But I don't need that. And I want that to become more what BookTube is about. The, the joy of reading and less about the joy of buying, if that makes sense. And actually, a perfect example. Hold on, where is it? This is one note. Here it is. I found it. This book right here. I bought this book last year, Howling Mad. I bought it on Amazon. I bought it for like $2. It's not in bad condition. It's in pretty good condition. It was written in 1989. It was a recommendation from a friend. I would have never picked this book up if it wasn't for my friend's recommendation. I would have never known it existed because you don't see old books anymore online. You don't see them without actually looking for them. And this book was phenomenal. It was a $2 book and I was so iffy purely because of when it was created. And that is something I need to get over with. Over. I don't know if you're like that. If you're not, fantastic. But we should all try next month. Try one indie book. Try one book that's older than you, that you wouldn't have picked up originally. Try it, see what happens. See if you love it, see if you hate it. And if you hate it, go try a different one. Try a different indie book. And if you need suggestions for indie books, I got plenty of suggestions, believe me. I will have to do another book tube video about all of the indie books that I have. And I haven't read all of these, don't tell the authors, even though I'm probably going to post this in the group and they're going to see it. But I plan to read them all. And they're going to be phenomenal. I can almost guarantee it. Out of all of the books that I've read as indie books, I've only been disappointed like twice. And other than that, I have been utterly amazed. And I need to do that. So if you're watching, my challenge to you is in the month of June try not to buy any new books unless there's like any anticipated books that you really really want try to buy at least one indie book that was self-published by an author or by an indie publishing company such as the dragon's rocket ship publishing hint hint nudge nudge we have two books coming out next month um and try to buy one used book that you know nothing about or that you've heard amazing things about from your fan friends and family and you want to check out. Try it. What's the worst that can happen? You spend a couple of dollars and you're disappointed. The best that can happen is you find a new author that you love and you start getting some more diversity on your bookshelf. This was, that's all my time. It's been 14 minutes. I've kind of rambled. Leave in the comments below what you think. If you disagree, please be respectful, or I will delete the comment. You guys are awesome. Bye!